Hello, and welcome to the eTown Abroad podcast. My name is Samantha Seely, and I'm the Student Outreach Coordinator for the Elizabethtown College Study Abroad Office. I studied abroad in Vienna, Austria, and Marburg, Germany, and in today's episode, I got to interview an alum who also studied abroad in Marburg decades before I did. Eton alum Bill Cave studied abroad in Germany from 1963 to 1964. It was absolutely wonderful to talk with him and to compare our experiences there. Enjoy the episode. Welcome to the E-Town Abroad podcast. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> to start off, could you please introduce yourself and uh, tell us where you studied abroad and when you studied abroad? Okay. Well, my name is William Cave. Bill is my name of uh, preference. I studied abroad in the BCA program in 1963 to 1964, and that happened to be the second year of the newly formed Brethren Colleges Abroad program. And um, you only had two choices then in terms of where you're going to study. It was either Marburg or Strasbourg, France. And I was among the group of E-Town students and the others who uh, went to Marburg. I was checking my some of my information that I've had kept through the years. And I realized uh, that uh, was reminded that we left actually in August. It was the 23rd of August that we set sail. In those days, you sailed to Europe, you didn't fly. So we set sail from New York on the Neue Amsterdam, was the name of the ship. And we set sail on the 23rd of August. And we wound up in Rotterdam, Holland. That's, that was our departure point. And uh, so that was the year I was there. Wow. <laughs> It took us about five days to get there, and uh, we, we made two stops, as I recall, one uh, on the coast of Ireland, and then uh, the other stop was uh, in England, off the coast of England, and then from there down through the channel and over to, uh, to Rotterdam. So it was exciting. <laughs> I bet. I just yeah. flew over and that was, that felt like a yeah. quick thing. I imagine oh, sailing yeah. was very different. <laughs> yeah, you were, you were there in a few hours. It took me several days. <laughs> but it was exciting. It was fun. It was fun. And then, of course, then coming back, uh, we also sailed coming back. We didn't fly. We sailed coming back. And coming back, we left from La Havre, France, and uh, <clears throat> sailed then into New York. Again, that was about five days to do that. And we left... Um, uh, the end of May and got into New York around June 6th. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> what led you to decide to study abroad? Because it wasn't as popular back then, was it? But no. Again, this was only the second year. And so that meant I was, uh, when I learned about this, uh, it was during my junior year at Elizabethtown. And I really hadn't heard much about it in my freshman year. And, but it was in my junior or my sophomore year that I started to uh, hear something about this BCA program, study abroad in Marburg, Germany, or Strasbourg. And um, I don't know that I took, I can't remember that I took the initiative to to inquire about this, as I recall, was one of the uh, religion professors uh, who had approached me and um, was wanting to know if I might be interested in study abroad. And I'd never thought about that. And I'll tell you, Samantha, it was, it was kind of scary because I realized that I really did not have much in the way of, uh, of German language study at E-Town and uh, figured that probably most of those students would have much more German study than I had language wise. And so I wasn't quite sure that I was really going to be a good fit for this because of that language barrier. So in my, in my sophomore year, I finally wound up taking a course in German and um, to try to get some, some preparation for this. You know, looking back, I, I, can, I can think of other persons who probably would have been more qualified in terms of at least their language ability. So anyhow, I, uh, I was approached and I thought about it and talked with my parents and I, I said yes, took 
uh, course in German during my sophomore year. So that's, that's how this got started. As it turned out, there were nine of us from Elizabethtown that year, uh, 63, 64. I was just looking at the list. There were about 29 students all together uh, for the whole, the whole year. Uh, and nine of us were Elizabethtown students. And then there were a number of students from Juniata and some other colleges that uh, participated. And so here was this group of nine from Elizabethtown going to Marburg, Germany. And uh, it happened that the director of the program that year was Dr. Robert Byerly, who was head of the religion department in Elizabethtown. And so I guess maybe that made it a little easier for me because I knew him, I had taken classes with him. And so I think that helped in making the decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you got there, you mentioned like taking that a language course before you went. Yeah. Uh, how much of a barrier was the language when you were over there? Yeah. Well, Samantha, initially it was. And, and once we got settled in Marburg, all of the students, regardless of what language preparation you had previously, all of us att attended uh, a language institute. And that was required of all, uh, all the Marburg students. And that lasted at least a month. And what they did was, they divided us up in terms of those of us who, who uh, had minimal language skills, German skills, language skills, and those who were a little bit more advanced. So we were all in different groups. And I was in one of the lower groups simply because I didn't, I didn't have the preparation level that others had. And there were a few others who were with me in that lower group. And uh, so that language institute was very, very intense. They didn't uh, go too easy on us. But it, it had to be because once we got into the university, well, you know, then we knew that we would, and just to, as you well know, just to, to survive living in Marburg. And, uh, <clears throat> but I, when I look back on it now, Samantha, I'm really kind of amazed at myself at, at, at how well I did eventually in terms of being able to shop and uh, get a haircut and, uh, you know, and, and all of that had to be done in uh, using German language. They weren't going to speak English to me. And, but initially it was kind of, uh, it was kind of frightening. And, uh, but the, the Language Institute did certainly, certainly did help. That's really interesting because that was more or less the same kind of process that they had when I went. I did have some language experience prior to going, but uh, they also kind of divided us up for a language at a language institute for the first yeah. two months. And that was definitely yeah. very helpful even mm -hmm. for, for all of us. And I can definitely, mm -hmm relate to the, the experience of yes. being like at first overwhelmed and then later kind of yeah. being like, oh, wow, I can, you know, yeah. go shopping and, and do all these things in German and feel capable <laughs> in this way. Yeah. Yeah. But, and, and at first I did feel kind of intimidated by those uh, students in, in the group who were much further along in their language proficiency. I was a little intimidated by that at first, but, you know, it was what it was. And uh, by the time classes started, um, we were we were ready to go. And uh, so, yeah, but at first it was a little scary. Uh -huh. yeah. What kinds of classes did you take while you were there? Oh, okay. Well, I even got my list. I have my <laughs> list. Yes. Now, again, I went to Marburg. I was a Bible and philosophy major at Elizabethtown. So some of my coursework obviously had to be, had to fit into that so that I didn't lose any credits when we returned. So, uh, of course, one of the courses was the Advanced German Grammar and Conversation. That was, you know, that was the Institute. I got credit for that, or I got a C for that. Uh, okay. Um, then there was a course I took on German Civilization and Culture. Okay. Then I took a course on uh, uh, Kirchengeschichte, that was church history. And then I took a course on history of Protestant mystics, the history of the Protestant mysticism. Then there was a course on psychology of child, adolescent and child psychology. That was interesting. Uh, the American novel, that was taught by an English uh, professor. I took a course on uh, European history. And then uh, Dr. Byerly, our director in, uh, in March and April, uh, he taught two courses for the BCA students, anyone else too, but primarily BCA students. And that was psychology of religion and world religions. And of course, those were two courses I would have probably taken back at E-Town had I been there my junior year, but Dr. Barley taught them while we were in Marburg. 
So that was my whole list of students or uh, of classes. For me in those years, I don't know how they did it for you, but in those years, credit hours wise, it was three credit hours for everything. But they used the combination of, of notes and, and uh, book reports, reading reports and all that kind of thing to determine what grade you got. And uh, so, you know, that's, that seemed to be a fair way to, to work at it. But that, those were the courses that I took uh, through the course of the year. And most of those were taught in German, of course. And uh, one thing that did help me, Samantha, was that I had a, and once we eventually got settled, we were all settled in different, uh, had different lodging sites, venues, and I eventually had a German roommate. So he, uh, uh, he was very helpful in terms of when it came to writing a report, a book report or whatever, he, he was helpful in terms of, of uh, making sure that I had the correct grammar, he would correct things for me. So that was helpful. And, but he was pretty insistent on not speaking English with me. He wanted to speak German, which was fine, but it did help to have a roommate uh, mm -hmm. who, was, who was German. And uh, he helped me through a lot of this. And so that was good. Yeah, I, I lived in a, a student dorm with uh, a lot of German students. And, and I could definitely tell that being able to be with these people and talk with them in German and, and uh, mm -hmm. learn from them in a way that was really helpful throughout the whole the whole year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the things that certainly was very different, and remember this was 1963, 1964, okay? And uh, the the border between East and West Germany was still very, very new. That had just been created about a year or two before that. Uh, the separation between East and West Germany was just very, very new. And we actually made a trip to, to uh, uh, Berlin, actually about this time of year, and had a chance to see the wall up close and to cross over at Checkpoint Charlie over into East Germany from West or from West Berlin into East Berlin. And so that was part, that was very much a part of, of the context in which we found ourselves historically. And the other thing, Samantha, that happened, 19, remember 19, uh, uh, fall of 1963, November of 1963, was the assassin, assassination of John F. Kennedy. And here I was in Germany, and uh, this happened. And, uh, and of course, it didn't take long for that uh, to get uh, to Germany. And I remember the German students approaching me, did you hear about the assassination of, of John F. Kennedy, or President Kennedy? So that was part of the historical context as well. Looking back, Samantha, I'm, I'm a bit puzzled as to why, why we never seem to have much conversation about, even my German roommate, I don't remember much conversation with him about you know, the reality of East Germany and West Germany and the reality of East Berlin and West Berlin. Because you know, 1963 uh, wasn't that many, many years from the end of World War II and uh, when all this division stuff got created. So I was always somewhat puzzled as to why we never really talked about that. There just didn't seem to be any conversation about that. I guess there were reasons for that, but of course then I never broached the subject either. And I guess I didn't feel it was in my place to do that. But that was part of the historical context for us that, uh, you know, students coming in other years, you know, that wasn't, uh, certainly not the assassination of John F. Kennedy. And, uh, uh, you know, that, you know, East and West, that was still brand, brand new. And I remember us making a trip uh, over into, getting ready to get over into East Germany. And we, uh, we approached a point where we had to stop and you could look across the, the border and you saw the, uh, the patrol towers positioned at different places. And uh, the, the, uh, the soldiers were there with loaded rifles. And uh, we had to be very, very careful how we, how we conducted ourselves. But there it was right in front of us. I mean, it was very, very real. And uh, so, you know, some young 20, 21 year old person that, that, that made quite an impact. But it was part of our year, you know? So that was, that was good. That was wow, yeah. that's really an incredible uh, experience, and and definitely a very different context for for that year than the context that I went abroad in. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Was it, did you feel like the like Cold War and like the split between East and West Germany you mentioned that you didn't really necessarily talk about it with uh, the people you knew, but did you feel it had like a really big impact on your day-to-day -day life in Marburg? Well, that's a good question. <clears throat> Quite honestly, Samantha, I don't think that it did. Uh, I mean, life, uh, life in Marburg was pretty good. And, uh, you know, it didn't, it didn't impact me in terms of, of traveling. And I did do a lot of traveling that year. And as you probably learned, travel by train was very, very easy. Even in 1963 and 64, it was quite easy and inexpensive. And so it didn't impact my ability <clears throat> to travel uh, where I, where I, different countries that I went to. So, um, and yet we couldn't forget that the reality of East Germany and West Germany was still very, very present. And it was, it was real. It wasn't just something that was on a piece of paper. And, but it really didn't, I didn't feel that it, that it uh, uh, created any difficulties as far as moving about. I even got to know a family uh, in a little town called Hofgeismeyer. I uh, got to know this family and they almost adopted me as their, as their, uh, as their son or one of their sons. They already had some sons. And they just took me in and I would travel by train from Marburg to Hofgeismeyer on weekends to visit with this family. And they just welcomed me and, and uh, they were very, very much involved in the uh, German Lutheran Church uh, in Hofgeismeyer. But again, uh, you know, there wasn't anything about, uh, you know, visiting with them that was awkward, uh, given the fact that East Germany was, was there. And for overall, we just, I don't remember having to really think hard about that and, and think that, oh, gee, maybe this isn't a place to be. Uh, it was very, very good to be there. Mm -hmm. It really was. Yeah. What's your favorite memory from your years studying abroad? Well, one of the favorite memories is what I just referenced, uh, getting to know a family. They had me there for my birthday. They had me there for Christmas and other times uh, that they would invite me to, to come and to spend time with them. And even when I returned home, uh, they still had contact with me. And uh, so that, that was very, very, very special. Being able to take responsibility for my own travel and actually getting to places that I never thought I would ever get to, that, that had, I mean, that was really, really special. I, I just, and I, I, when I look back, I'm really kind of proud of myself that I, that I initiated that. No one was planning this for me. I wasn't part of a group, although the trip to Berlin was, was part of a group. Uh, but otherwise, you know, I was doing this on my own. And so I look back and think, gee, here I was, 20 years old, uh, could speak some German, but, you know, I wasn't really, really proficient. But here I would go to the train station in Marburg. I would purchase my ticket and tell them where I wanted to go. And that, that is just a really, really neat memory that, that I was able to do that. And, uh, you know, got to, got to Innsbruck, which was the site of the 1964 Winter Olympics. So I was there before the Winter Olympics started in January or February. Got to see some of the venue, uh, the Olympic venue sites in, in uh, Innsbruck. Got to even ski a little bit on one of the venues. And um, those are really, really special memories, Samantha. Mm -hmm. And uh, had to be the highlight of the year. In those days, you have to remember, we didn't have the internet in 63 and 64. We didn't have the internet. internet. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have all the neat, fancy technology that you had. So... Uh, what I did almost every week, not exactly every week, but pretty close, I wrote a letter to my family. In fact, I have, I have all the letters right here. <laughs> the, all the letters that I wrote. <laughs> Handwritten. And of course, they were air, ma air mailed from uh, Marburg to my uh, uh, folks home in Hershey. So that's what I did. I wrote a letter every, almost every week in terms of telling them all about my travels and what happened and et cetera, et cetera. So that was the way I was really helping to preserve. I mean, when I re I've, I've read these letters now, Samantha, several times, and uh, it's like a diary because I told them <laughs> everything. And I went into great detail telling them about uh, what was happening and who I met and where I was going and uh, doing my, my classwork, et cetera. And uh, now I can go back and reread these letters 
and it just all comes back to me. Uh -huh. it's, it's, it's just amazing. I didn't realize that my, that my parents were saving these letters. I thought maybe they'd read them and then discard. No, they kept them. And uh, so anyhow, in, now you wouldn't do that now, you know, but in 63 and 64, that's what you did. Mm -hmm. and at least that's what I did. I was determined to keep them uh, informed. And uh, when I wrote a letter, I, I gave them great detail. <laughs> <laughs> and they loved it. You know, they loved it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's really, that's incredible. Because, yeah, it's, it's so much easier now with like the internet and, and messaging and phone calls and it's like that wasn't ever necessarily a concern of of like really it was so much easier for me when I was there that yeah it and, sounds <laughs> and and the year that you were there was what year uh 2018 to 2019 okay cool all mm -hmm. right good good yes yeah a different uh a different world entirely. <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> do you have a favorite memory I have a lot of really good memories. I think some of my favorite memories were, it was the Labor Day celebration there. And it was like the whole city kind of had this big celebration the night before Labor Day. Mm -hmm. And that was mm -hmm. a really good time to hang out with friends. And then the next day it was like this, all the city was like, no stores were open, everything was closed, no classes, and we just all went and we hung out in the park and, and walked around. It was it was a good time. Yeah. 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 How many how many students were with you when you were there? Uh the first semester that I was there, there were there was one other student from Elizabethtown okay. and three other students from other no, four other students from other colleges. Mm -hmm. Um the second semester, there were a lot of, it was a big group. I think we had, I want to say 12 people total. Um, mm -hmm. And and most of them were from E-Town. I want to say there were seven of them were from E-Town, maybe eight. Okay. Uh, so it was a pretty big group the second semester. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and that's neat. And that was a little different from us because <clears throat> the group that left in August was a group that remained in me. We didn't get any new students coming uh, for or a, a second semester. We were there for the whole year. And, <clears throat> and that's just the way they did it in, in those in that early period. And whereas now, you know, it's, it's, it's a little different. So you know, there was no one else joining us and, uh, and no one left either. We all, <laughs> we, all, we all stayed. I'm glad that we had, you know, had that, that opportunity. But again, as I said, in those years, it was either Marburg or Strasburg. And now, I mean, you have so many different venues and it was interesting to see how that kept evolving over time, Samantha. And <clears throat> by the time we got to the 50th anniversary of BCA, you know, it was just incredible how many different campuses or uh, venues, steady venues there were uh, as compared to, you know, back in the day. It, it's just been a joy to, to watch this evolve. When I was talking about these letters, I, as I said, every now and then I, I pull them out and I look at date because I have the date on all the letters. So I actually wrote a letter home uh, on March, uh, March the 14th of 1964. And so I got that letter out and I was reading it uh, earlier today. And I thought, oh my goodness gracious, did I really, did that really happen? And I must confess some of the things that I wrote about, I, I, I'm not sure that I could remember actually doing it. But there it is, you know. <laughs> uh, got to sing in a church choir. Gosh, we, uh, and I don't know if you did this, but uh, the, the year I was there, one of the trips that the BCA folks made was to uh, uh, Schwarzenau, which is the birthplace of the Church of the Brethren. <clears throat> so we made a trip to this little town, village actually of Schwarzenau, and saw the Ader River where the first Church of the Brethren folk were rebaptized because they were all adults and they were rebaptized in the river. So we got to see that. Dr. Byerly was very instrumental in helping to make that uh, trip happen. So, you know, I could come home and talk to my Church of the Brethren folk. Hey, I got to see Schwarzen now. Got to see where they were baptized. And, you know, that was, that was very, very special. Again, when I think back, 
1963 and 1964, you know, how many students were actually studying abroad in those years? I, I don't know, but Elizabethtown really, really kind of took the initiative. And uh, <clears throat> so, uh, and the fact that we did have students from, uh, from other colleges and as you did as well. And uh, you know, that, you know, that spoke well. We had folks from Eastern Mennonite, uh, you know, the fact that even in that early, in that second year, we were already welcoming other students from other colleges because, you know, they didn't have the opportunity on their campus. I think that was, you know, that was very, very special that we already had other kids involved from other colleges in, in, that, in that second year. So are you glad you did it? Oh, absolutely. I'm so I'm so grateful that I did it. I I really it was a different it was a difficult year at times, of course it was. Yeah. Um, but I really think that it's it's had a really positive influence on my life uh, as a whole. And what I changed about your world? What changed about your worldview as a result of being there for a year? I think it made me more aware of myself and my my strengths and weaknesses in a way and it kind of made me aware of like okay so this is how I engage with the world partially like because of my cultural background and my personal history and stuff and then it kind of showed okay there's other ways of interacting with the world there's other ways of of um and it kind of showed me places where it's like okay like I need it like here's where I can be more independent and and here's different ways that I can address problems and challenges one thing I know that I struggled with a lot when I, when I was over there was like a feeling of anxiety. I, mm -hmm. And going over there, it was really hard on the anxiety, but then also it's like definitely been an experience where it's like, okay, no, like I can handle my anxiety when I have it and I can move past uh, challenges and do these difficult things and, and interact with people in a way that I don't think I was able to before going. Yeah. yeah. And, and that was really required of you. I mean, you had, you had to do that. That was just part of the, the whole learning experience. It wasn't just the classroom learning. It was just the whole cultural experience and learning some things that you said about yourself that you might not have learned right away or that soon in your young life. And uh, I, I want to think too, Samantha, that, that maybe it helped us to become better citizens here in this country. You know, I think we had, we had to learn to be careful how we conducted ourselves. You know, because I think you'll, you know that in Europe, there are some folk who have a very uh, kind of a biased view of, of Americans and uh, how they conduct themselves and their attitude and what have you. So I think we had to be mindful of that and realize that we were guests in their country. And uh, just because we were from the United States didn't mean that we were better than uh, that, uh, you know, we deserved any special privileges or favors. You know, we had to get past all of that. If, if we carried any of that with us, we really needed to get past that. And I think that was an important learning experience. You know, how to, to treasure and to respect and honor uh, traditions and culture that were very different from ours. And not to think that well, ours is better than because it's the United States. So I think, Samantha, that probably for all of us, that was in one way or another, that was an important learning experience for us. And I think we're I think we, we we became better citizens as a result of that. I think more respectful, maybe better equipped to listen better and uh, to try to understand, uh, to do conversation a little bit better, to be more intentional about that as, as a learning tool. And, and being in that setting, I think uh, those are skills that we had to, we just had to learn and uh, just to learn to be a better person. Mm -hmm. and, uh, not think so highly of ourselves because we're from the United States. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I, don't I don't know how much of an issue that was, but I, I kind of think maybe we had to give some thought to that. And uh, again, as I said, we were guests in their country. Mm -hmm. and uh, We weren't there because they invited us. <laughs> yes. And they extended yes. the opportunity. They welcomed us, yes, but we weren't there because they invited us to come there. I think that for me, Samantha, that really became very, very much reinforced as a result of being part of that family unit. I mean, they were just so welcoming and inviting. And I think it was because, you know, I didn't come with any agenda. You know, I didn't uh, have an attitude. 
uh, and they just welcomed me and I just became one of their family members. And, you know, I sat at the table with them. I dined with them. I went to church with them. And uh, Christmas Eve was there with them, Christmas Day. And, and I think that was being part of that family really helped me to uh, kind of grow up a little bit and uh, <clears throat> to learn to be more respectful, more courteous, and, and more, more appreciative of, of people whose traditions were different from mine. And for myself to be welcoming of their traditions and their, their ideas and their interpretations, the way they processed things. Um, and uh, and I, must, I must confess sometimes I got a little disgusted with my roommate because he didn't want to speak English to me. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, why don't you want to speak English with me? And, uh, but you know, I, I learned to respect that. And uh, <clears throat> I think he learned to respect me. We were very different personality wise in some ways, but uh, I think he, he understood that one of the ways he could help me was to not make things so easy for me. <laughs> you know, and he did it in a kind way. You know, he wasn't mean or ugly, but, uh, you know, hey, you're in Germany, got to learn to speak German. <laughs> so anyhow, that, you know, I, it just made you take a look at a deeper look at yourself, I think, in terms of who you are and, you know, develop a much, a much broader worldview and, and all of that. And, and I think overall, my sense was that the other students, the German students did respect us and, and they were okay with us. That was part of the learning experience. Mm -hmm. and, and what does a 20 year old know anyhow? <laughs> <laughs> we don't know anything. <laughs> you know, so if we were over thinking that, you know, we were the hot shots, these hot shot students from the United States. Well, no, no, no. We weren't the hot shot students from the United States. Uh, you know, we just a whole lot that we didn't, we didn't yet know. Mm -hmm. But I think all that resonates with you. And, yes. Uh, you know, and, uh, and maybe that's a good time in your life to, to be involved in an experience like this, you know, when you're 20 something and, you know, think you know everything and you have every, all the answers to everything. Well, no, you really don't. <laughs> and so maybe that year abroad in Marburg, you know, helped to uh, open your eyes about some things and realize that uh, there's more to the world than what, <clears throat> what you envisioned to be there. That was part of it. That was part of it. That's why I was, and that's why I'm glad, Samantha, that we could, that we were able to be there for a whole year. And I understand that now some students just go for a semester or they'll go for a summer and, and that's fine. But when I look back on it, I've said to myself multiple times, I'm really glad that we had the chance to be there for a whole year. And I mean, there were just some things that we were able, able to do in terms of travel and just to get to know Marburg as a result of the whole year versus just a a semester or a summer. Yes. And, and I think you would probably agree with that. I, yes, I 100% agree. I feel like the fact that I was there for a full year, it not only helped my language skills improve a lot, but it was also because I was there for a whole year, that became my home. It became a home rather than just a place that I was visiting for vacation. It, right. it was like, okay, this is the day-to-day -day life. Like this is, I am part of this community in a way that I wouldn't necessarily be if I was just there for a shorter period of time. That's right. That's right. That's right. And when I, again, when I look at my letters and I look at my, my address, the return address on the top of the letter, you know, that was my address, you know, that, that was my home. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm proud of that. You know, that was, that was my home. Yeah. It was you know, a whole year. I think really, if you can do it a whole year, I think from my perspective, that's, that's a way to do it if you can. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, but uh, anyhow, it, uh, so it, it was just a fantastic year. Uh, and I'm so glad that all of you who came on, on the scene much later, have had the same, the same opportunity. And, you know, you'll be talking about this, Samantha, for the rest of your life. <laughs> and you will. You yeah. Will. And uh, even though, you know, even though you didn't write it all down, like I did in a letter form, you know, you, you have, have all those memories. And uh, so you'll, you'll talk about this long into the future. And it helped to shape, I think it helped to shape us to some extent, the kind of person that we have become. Not to feel that we're better than, but to just be grateful and thankful that that opportunity presented. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and to know that our families were supportive of us. You know, 
I mean, my parents could have said, no, you're absolutely not. And if, I mean, look, you have East and West Germany now and you have the wall in Berlin and, and guards along the, the border and no way are you, no, they, they didn't. They were very supportive. And once they got over the idea, I was going to be gone for a whole year. <laughs> it wasn't just a semester. Once they got past that, you know, and they were okay. One last question. Oh, uh, I yes. always ask everyone this question yes. who comes yes. uh, on the podcast. How would you describe study abroad in five words? Five words. <laughs> it was an awesome experience. Very awesome. <laughs> Great. That's five words. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> now I must I must confess, Samantha, in 1963 and 64, the word awesome wasn't always in my vocabulary. I didn't use that. <laughs> 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 and now all these years later, I, I love the word awesome. And so I look back on it now and I can say it was an awesome experience. I don't know if I would have used that word then to describe it, but I do now. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Is that okay? Yep. <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, thank you so much. It's been so much fun. So delightful. Subscribe to the Etown Abroad podcast wherever you get your podcasts and follow us on Instagram at Etown Abroad. For more information on our study abroad programs, visit etown.edu. The music for our show was composed by Elizabeth Baker and Avery Faust, and this episode was produced by Samantha Seeley. Thanks for listening.